Welcome everybody. So glad you are able to join us for this webinar. Today we are going to be going over some basic Luminate recipes. Uh, before we start, we always like to introduce ourselves. My name is Danielle Gloy. I will be monitoring the chat today and then leading our content is Peter Spaulding. So our job is to research and write about topics that are helpful and insightful for suppliers like you, which if this is your first time joining one of our webinars, we are part of Supplier Wiki which is kind of like the educational arm of Supply Pike. So we help create free educational resources like these webinars. We have multiple eBooks that cover content across different retailers. Um, we also do a variety of articles and we address a lot of retailer updates and news in our Vendable newsletter. So if you uh, want to stay in the loop with that, you can sign up for our newsletter on our website. So here at Supply Wiki, our goal is to make content that is going to be the most beneficial to you and that is ultimately going to set you up for success. So if there is co specific content that you maybe want to see more of, please feel free to reach out to us so we can help create that for you. So moving on to the agenda, we have a packed one for this hour. Uh, we are going to start off going over an introduction to Luminate and how it impacts suppliers. Then we will do a comparison between Luminate Basic and Charter. So we will see the different features the free version offers versus the paid version. Uh, after that, we'll move on to the best tips and strategies for pulling different kinds of reports in Luminate. We'll be opening the floor for some Q&A time following all this content. And then we'll wrap up the webinar with a product preview of Supply Pike for Walmart. So lots of good content to cover today. All right. So here are a few FAQs that we typically get during webinars. Uh, so the first being, will we be getting a copy of the slide deck? Yes, absolutely. You can expect to see the PDF version of the slide deck as well as the recording of the webinar appear in your email inbox in about three to four business days. And if you ever want to find another webinar that you maybe weren't able to attend, uh, you can find go to our website and you'll find the recordings there as well as the PDF versions of the slide decks that you can download. And second question that we typically get is, what is the best way to ask a question? So at the bottom of your screen, you'll see a Q&A tab that has two little speech bubbles. And this is where we ask you to please submit any questions related to the content, as I'll be able to monitor them and then tee them up for Peter for the Q&A time at the end. I am anticipating a lot of questions coming in uh, for this topic. So if you have any um, about the content, send them in early. Uh, I may interject sometime during the webinar if there is maybe a question pertinent to the content that Peter is going through. Uh, but for the most part, I will be saving them for the end. So last little thing before we get into the content, uh, Supply Pike is a platform designed to help suppliers get paid and get better. So we do this with a software that identifies, recovers, and prevents deductions and compliance issues. Uh, we do this in a lot of different ways and with multiple different retailers like Amazon, Target, Home Depot, Kroger, and Walmart. Um, some things we cover at Walmart include like AP deductions, OTIF, SQUEP, overages, the list just goes on. Um, so anything that could be impacting your bottom line, uh, we have built these tools to help target and resolve those revenue loss issues. And just a little shout out, we work with a lot of great suppliers. We have some of them up here on the slide today. And if you can't, aren't currently working with us, we would love to see your brand's logo up here in the future. And with that, I will hand it over to Peter to get into today's content. Thank you, Danielle. That was a great little introduction. And um, <clears throat> yeah, so today we're talking about Luminate, um, something that has been kind of uh, on people's minds a bit uh, over the last year. <laughs> um, and so, yeah, we'll be we'll be unpacking the basics, uh, mostly just kind of what are some of the most common tools and reports that you can pull without using the paid version uh, charter, which we have a different webinar on. But yeah, uh, thank you all uh, for being here with us today. We're so excited um, uh, that you're here. I wanted to start out with a little bit of a disclaimer, just that whenever we talk about, whenever we talk about more kind of hot button issues or things that are that uh, suppliers tend to have kind of strong feelings about, we sometimes get conflated with Walmart or we sometimes get confused. So um, uh, we just wanted to be clear, kind of from the very beginning that we are not uh, speaking authoritatively on Walmart's behalf. We do not 
um, have a partnership with them to help kind of as, as like a training course or anything like that. Um, but what we're doing is we're taking the same kind of documents that you guys have access to, or maybe the same documents that um, you didn't know that you had access to, or that you don't have the time to go kind of through and read. We're taking all of that information. We're taking, we're interacting with other suppliers. We're asking suppliers other questions. And what we're doing is we're just trying to aggregate some really kind of um, best tips and strategies uh, and to create some educational content um, around that. So just a, a disclaimer before uh, going any further, it's a good thing for us to um, uh, to talk about sort of generally. Uh, I also wanted to start things out. We have a little bit of uh, uh, a few kind of comments uh, in the chat already, um, but just um, I'm curious about what your experience in the Luminate app has been so far. Uh, are you using basic? Are you using charter? What has that experience been like? Has it been difficult? Are there any particular pain points that you've been having? Um, I've spent a lot of time in Luminate, um, but I haven't been spending the same time in Luminate that you guys have. Uh, the reports that you're pulling, um, uh, how has that transition been from DSS? Uh, have you been able to kind of duplicate some of those reports successfully, or has it been just kind of a challenge? What's it been like with your buyer, et cetera? Any, any kind of feedback that you guys have? Um, I, uh, I'm really, uh, interested in, um, so, uh, one person says, uh, haven't had a lot of experience with it yet, but we will have to be using basic here in a little bit. Um, so that's a great little, uh, shout out there. Um, good to know that, um, that it's not, not everyone will be using charter. We've been seeing a lot of um, we've been seeing a lot of charter users. Another another person has submitted saying that uh, they're using basic and so far so good. Uh, another thing that I would like to uh, that I would like to um, or just that I'm curious about is. Has everyone been having a negative experience with Luminate? Because I think sometimes that the negative voices get really loud and they kind of drown out um, some of the people who are enjoying it. One thing I think the the user experience from a purely UX perspective, from a purely like website-based perspective, um, Luminate is is a lot cleaner than DSS and, and everyone has been kind of in agreement about that. So great. We've got a lot of basic users, um, not a ton of people uh, submitting questions about Charter uh, today, hopefully. Um, but if you do have questions about Charter, please uh, submit those too. I have, I have uh, um, a little bit of experience with that too. And we have a different webinar on it also. So um, that's totally welcome. All right. So um, there is a lot of one of the things I noticed with Luminate and with Luminate's educational materials on the platform itself is that there's a lot of kind of businesses and, and it is very difficult to understand what's the real heart of these tools. What's the real kind of purpose of these tools? Um, so this is Walmart Luminate's definition of itself, really, which is a suite of analytic tools that deliver actionable customer centric insights to drive better business decisions at Walmart. That's a pretty good definition. Um, without getting into too many of the of the nitty gritty kind of details. But yeah, basically Luminate is supposed to be, Luminate Basic is replacing DSS. That's what it's for. A part of that means that some of the business elements are changing. Um, there's a different uh, uh, point of focus that Walmart wants its suppliers to have around um, omni-channel, around uh, more accurate .com reporting, stuff like that. So that's the kind of general push. With Charter, what we see is that there's a lot more of a kind of um, touch point with the customers themselves. Walmart is trying to create more of a dialogue between the customers and the suppliers of those products. Um, so uh, as well as as well as with Charter, you have better kind of um, category data, better kind of insight into uh, how, how you're performing relative to other competitors. How you're performing within certain kind of demographics, uh, so, um, so that's that. Um, in general, the uh, Luminate, and again, this is maybe more businesses than this is actual kind of granular detail, but it should help with new product launches and line extensions, package redesigns, seasonal promotions, um, distribution, and/or modular changes that also account for pickup and delivery. So these maybe are more kind of tangential or things on the side that Luminate could be used for. Um, <clears throat> um, 
not as a replacement for things like item 360 or uh or supplier one but um just that it's connected to everything else as well so we got a dss timeline here i believe that dss is gone i don't think that you can access it anymore on retail link definitely let us know in the chat or in the q a um if that's true or not i think dss is gone um, and now everyone is kind of being forced into Luminate. So maybe you would only use DSS for pulling um, one or two reports. Maybe you were in DSS all the time. And um, so the, the transition is more intense for some people than it is for others. Um, but everyone has Luminate basic access basically automatically. Um, and then some people will have Charter. And uh, this isn't a recommendation. This is just a little bit of an observation. But it seems like obviously if you're a much bigger supplier if you have if a if a much bigger portion of your business is moving through walmart than others those are factors that would lead people to consider purchasing charter it's a uh, uh, well, uh, selling products in a retailer can sometimes be difficult in that it's separating you from the customer right remember how we talked about charter is really designed to um, Walmart is doing all of these initiatives, all of these uh, surveys and things like that to try to um, bridge that gap, right? You don't want there to be a, any gap at all between you and your customer, between what their experience is and all of that, right? And and selling in Walmart is a really great opportunity, obviously for big companies, sometimes it's a necessity, right? So Charter uh, is more helpful for, for some of those suppliers. Okay, uh, Janine has said in the chat that uh, DSS is not gone, but we have someone else saying that it is gone. So this may be that uh, so someone else says that they do have access um, to DSS, I believe. Um, so maybe there's a little bit of a staggering process. We've seen Walmart, you know, Walmart is kind of unpredictable in a lot of ways, but maybe there are some people who do still have access. Maybe some people don't. Um, so that is kind of par for the course. Um Okay, so someone else uh, is also saying that uh, uh, Jose has said in the chat that he also still has access to DSS and that he's using it as we speak. Okay, fascinating. Maybe we'll get another update. Walmart will notify suppliers when their access will be eliminated in Q2 is what Gary has said. Okay, so it may be happening on a supplier to supplier basis um, as opposed to an all at once thing. That would be my guess. Just arbitrarily, Walmart is picking people to uh deny access to <laughs> just kidding that's a joke um that's not real so yeah uh here's more of what we're talking about okay you have a 30-day notice individually um for when you will no longer have access to it um or that 30-day notice just hasn't come out for everyone yet um but yeah this is this is um q2 is is basically the last kind of period of access um people will be switching over um, originally it was March 1st. That was the kind of kill switch date for everyone for DSS. Um, no more access after March 1st, but now it's sometime in Q2, uh, there will be a 30 day notice. So it's, uh, now is the time really to start thinking about what are the reports that you're pulling in DSS that you won't be able to pull in Luminate? Um, what are the, uh, uh, or what are the rough equivalents that's, uh, I'll be doing a little bit of that today talking a little bit about, okay, here's the general report that you could pull in DSS for this particular data. What's the rough equivalent of that in Luminate? But I wanna start at the very beginning to say that uh, um, one of my axes to grind in this is that Walmart is really changing the way that you can do reporting because they want different information. And that's a painful transition. It's, a, it's like a Band-Aid that you have to rip off. Um, but it may be helpful to think about it more in terms of Luminate is Walmart guiding the, the reporting that you're doing, right? And so there's some benefits to that. And then there's some painful uh, elements to that too. But it is it is better on some level to think about it, not so much as how can I translate all these reports that I was pulling in DSS into Luminate to like, okay, let's just start doing the things that they want me to do in Luminate and, and kind of adjust from there. Now, that's just a... That's just a uh, an, an educated guess, I would say, about like what this transition kind of means. Um, so take all that and everything that I say ever with a grain of salt. That's my new kind of motto. <laughs> but uh, yeah, 
And again, of course, if you guys have your own opinions about that, please let us know in the chat too. All right, so this I'm gonna go over really quickly. We've talked about this in a lot of webinars. I don't wanna kind of beat a dead horse. Um, most of you, I think based on your feedback, you have you know a lot of this stuff already. So we're gonna look a little bit at the Walmart Walmart's uh, supplier facing documentation on DSS, uh, Luminate Basic and Luminate Charter, what the differences are. And then we're gonna kind of try to parcel out from that some other insights that might not be quite as obvious just from that. Um, but we'll include all of Walmart's stuff here too, just in case you haven't seen it before. And again, you'll be getting a copy of the slide deck so you can have all that on hand too. So um, you all know uh, uh, this adjustment is gonna be really big. We've been talking about this. It's gonna be kind of painful for some people, uh, more painful for some than others, right? Depending on how reliant um, you are for DSS or your particular team is, right? So. Um, yeah, all that pretty obvious. Right? Walmart has made that kind of clearly known too. So the first thing that uh, and and really the so this is the this is Walmart's supplier facing documentation, and there's a lot of very interesting language that's being used here to describe what DSS didn't have, right? So the enhanced ecom sales reporting, basically, this is Walmart's way of just saying, the ecom uh, sales reporting in DSS wasn't fully accurate. I think that's what is going on there. Um, this is something that we've seen in a lot of training videos that Walmart has put on about how to use Luminate. Is that um, DSS's dot com reporting is not fully accurate. It's not. It's not the full picture, right? And there is a difference. And I know that I know this from talking to other people. Some people have seen a marked difference in in the you just do like a, a dot com sales report in DSS dot com sales report in Luminate. You're going to get different numbers. So um, really stressful, really kind of confusing and scary uh, uh, stuff. How uh, accurate was DSS? How or how inaccurate was DSS? Um, and what is this new data that we're getting? All that we know is Walmart has said Luminate is more accurate. Um, so. So go with the Luminate numbers. Um, and they're telling that to buyers, they're telling it to suppliers. Um, but of course, the, the mileage varies a lot in terms of how much an individual supplier is kind of clued into this information, how much an individual buyer is clued into it, right? Uh, there were a lot of buyers who had no idea that DSS was going away. Uh, there were some buyers who didn't care that DSS was going away, right? So again, mileage varies a lot. Uh, to some people, it's a lot more important. Uh, okay, so there's a couple of things um, I want to call out here too. All of the inventory stuff is going to be the same. Um, ideally, there's some features that you could have in other retail link apps that Walmart is providing in Charter, um, but basically in the form of reports that you could pull in a way that is potentially easier than um, in those individual apps themselves. So like OTIF, for example, or PO data, this information is it's accessible. You can find it in other places, right? So uh, they talk about the OTIF scorecard um, for uh, in retail link for getting OTIF data, right? And they're saying that wasn't available in DSS, but you can use Charter for it. So again, let me know. Is Charter actually easier? Is Charter actually easier for pulling OTIF data than the than the score than the OTIF scorecard app is in Retail Link? Um, I know Retail Link is just kind of a pain to use to to log into. So maybe that's one of the benefits. I don't. That doesn't to me seem like a huge kind of monetary value. Uh, um, but again, yeah, all that. I defer to you, uh, to the uh, people, more boots on the ground pulling these reports kind of constantly. Um, same thing with PO data. Uh, you can still go into Nova. Uh, Nova is still up, right? Um, but all of this information can be found in Supplier 1 as well. So we've got a lot on Supplier 1. Uh, we're, we're talking a lot about that, especially in days to come. What is it? Uh, what kind of functionality is, is available there anyways? But yeah, so so some of that information uh, is there. We talk about a little bit. Well, we'll get to it in a little bit. Just wanted to shout that out. Not sure how beneficial these these new kind of advances in in Charter are. A um, couple other uh, quick shout outs. Report sharing is a lot easier in Charter. 
than it is in basic. Um, and it's a lot easier in basic than it was in DSS, uh, allegedly. So again, let me know what your mileage has been like with that. You can, um, uh, uh, there are no report limits and charter stuff like that, right? So this is Walmart just trying to incentivize bigger suppliers to pay uh, for charter um, in that sense too. Quick shout out, bot access, which was available in DSS is now no longer available in Luminate. That can be a pretty big thing. Um, I, what I will say is that the, um, the data feeds and APIs can sort of function in a similar way to bots, uh, depending on what you were using those bots for. Um, you can use APIs in some in some similar ways. Just pull that data automatically and, and send it off to a different kind of program or app or whatever. Um, so yeah, that's why data feeds and APIs comes immediately after the bot access notification there. And then insights, it's another kind of big part of charter that if you're if you're curious more about that, um, if you have some, if you have some questions about you, you as a as a Walmart business are trying to figure out if Charter is worth it for you. I'd highly recommend going to our Charter webinar, um, uh, or or just watching it on YouTube, downloading the slide deck. Just read up on it a little bit. We don't we won't give you uh, uh, advice, but what we can do is we can say, hey, here's the stuff that had that Charter has. Here's the stuff that Luminate Basic has. And does that sound like something that um, you would want? So uh, DSS features that are just going away. Right, they just that are not available in basic. We already talked about bot access, uh, report sharing, and POs. Again, those POs you can find in Nova in Retail Link. You can also find them in Supplier One. So uh, that's that. New features for Luminate Basic that were not there in DSS. Again, the big thing is just accurate ecom sales data. Uh, Walmart was kind of like, well, DSS might have been inaccurate for a little bit, and they chose not to kind of uh, disclose any more information <laughs> other than that. So basically, Luminate will have better uh, omni-channel, better uh, .com performance reporting. And then there's also email notifications on report completion in Luminate Basic. <sighs> okay, so in Charter, and again, you can check out our Charter webinar if this is the stuff that you're really curious about. Uh, there's three big ones that really take the form of three separate apps um, in Luminate Charter, as well as a bunch of other uh, features that you have in other places in Retail Link or in Supplier One. Um, so you can uh, read up on all that. But insights, shopper behavior, customer perception, these are basically separate apps within Luminate Charter that are designed to help give you a sense of how are you doing relative to your other competitors what is your uh, customer like? Um, what uh, uh, what are they buying at each kind of age range or each uh, demographic? And then and then what is your customer's perception of your product? And that takes the form of surveys that they that they send out. Um, it's pretty interesting stuff. And I will say, you know, I'm not a big fan of Walmart Luminate's educational documentation, but I will say I don't know who it was. Someone else is writing the documentation for customer perception because that educational documentation is pretty pretty good. I would say it's pretty uh, it's a good read. Um, it's 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 well written. I would say as an English teacher or as an ex English teacher, I can uh, I think I can uh, say that. So definitely, I would go check that out. Some of the other help docs are not quite as helpful. Uh, so what are we going to gain? Um, sounding like a broken record. It's just about performance visibility for uh, omnichannel.com, all of that, right? Uh, some of these, um, some of the reports uh, are limited, basically, depending on whether you have charter or not. I don't like phrasing it that way so much, but it will feel that way, probably. Uh, charter, you can customize a lot more of your data um, and, and, We'll get into that a little bit more. Um, but with basic, you will have the basics. You will have everything that you need to basically uh, uh, to report to your buyer and to your um, uh, leadership um, about your performance in Walmart.
So a uh, little bit on this before we move on. Um, what is the charter investment? A couple things to take into consideration, especially uh, for uh, some of the smaller companies out there where you would maybe have to be a decision maker in this process. It's about, it's based off of the, the pricing is based off of retail sales, not sales to Walmart. So this is something that has been really confusing and, and, and frustrating for some people, whereas maybe not so much a, a big deal to others. <clears throat> the, the costs for something like Illuminate Charter might offset costs that you've been spending maybe with like a Nielsen or someone else to try to get or analyze data. Um, so that's a possibility. It might be something that you could transfer from something else to Luminate Charter. Uh, another just shout out that isn't written here, but I thought I'd I thought I'd mention. Charter works well in tandem with with other kind of like Nielsen um, uh, data as well. So it's not it's not totally mutually exclusive or a zero sum game. Uh, but yeah, again, generally what we see is bigger suppliers, people who have a big portion of their business in Walmart. These are the people who are really going to need to have all the visibility that Walmart will will sell to them through Charter. They're really going to have a lot more to kind of gain from it. But I, I don't want that to be a hard and fast rule either. You know, it, uh, your, you know your business better than anyone else does. But that's a trend that I've seen, I can say, um, across across the, the Walmart world. So uh, I just wanted to call this out. Some of you have probably seen this. This is a specific uh, report builder release announcement, but basically another thing that people have been really frustrated by is that Walmart appears to be kind of pushing people out of DSS before Luminate is fully built out yet. So a lot of you were saying that you haven't really spent that much time in Luminate Basic yet, but you will have to whenever you get the 30 day kind of uh, uh, notice. So my recommendation is just is just to go into Luminate and, and try to start pulling those reports and getting a little bit more familiar with it, read up about it as much as you can. But take into account that it's not completely built out yet. It's not finished, right? So there's a lot of stuff that Walmart is promising. There's some stuff that Walmart promised that they were a little bit late on. There's some stuff that they promised that they weren't late on. So there's, yeah, there's some stuff. But this was some of the stuff that they uh, announced was new uh, as of February 7th. So this is an example, basically, of just a kind of report, build a release. I don't know if any others have happened since then, but they certainly will as 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 Luminate gets finished, right? And I suppose that all of this is is connected to the timeline. It's connected to, you know, Walmart had this very hard March 1st date of like, this is when you need to make the transition. You need to get all of your reports um, out of DSS or, or wherever by this date. So maybe what's happening is Walmart is realizing that they want to build out the app a lot more before they force everyone onto it. So yeah. But that's something I definitely wanted to call out here too uh, before going on. Okay, it's 11.30 or at the bottom of the hour. I want to kind of speed up a little bit, but this is really kind of more the meat. Um, just how would you go about pulling a report and illuminate? What do they look like? And so we'll give you a little bit of the kind of a sense of the dashboard and, and maybe a little bit of orientation uh, in there as well. So first, we're going to be looking at building a report from scratch. So some of the kind of basic elements... Uh, this is this is just kind of like uh, reporting 101. You need a filter for time. Uh, you can't you can't pull data on all of everything that has ever existed. So the time filter obviously is very important. And then basically you need a metric and a dimension. So um, all of that is is pretty self explanatory. But if you're starting from the bare bare scratch, if you're if you're if you're not using any of the other filters and you're just you're just pulling a random report. This is the bare minimum for what you'll need um, just to kind of get going, right? But uh, what I want to do is look at look at the most kind of commonly used uh, reports in BASIC um, and and give you a little bit of a, an orientation as as in terms of what are the what is the correlation, the rough correlation that this has to uh, DSS and all of this. Um, yeah, any feedback that you have on it would be. Uh, really helpful 
too. So if there's if there's a different report in DSS that you think is is a better kind of equivalent or it's more helpful to think of this in terms of a different report in DSS, please uh, let me know in the chat. That'd be super helpful. But yeah, here we go. So the way that it starts out, you'll get you'll have some kind of display. Um, it's changed a little bit since the very beginning of Luminate 2. So take all that into consideration also. But this is the top left nav. If you if you click on it, it'll drop down. You can see here shopper behavior and insights because this is a charter uh, account, but you can go right into report builder. Report builder is basically what Luminate Basic is. So report builders will look different. I believe they will look different for charter accounts as opposed to basic accounts. So um, that may be the case too. I think that these enhanced notifications, things that you see at the top right of each of these is is a charter thing. I could be wrong, but I think that's when you can you can pull more uh, select data from uh, uh, things that you've customized in Charter. But yeah, these are the basic reports. Uh, a lot of this stuff will make some sense to those of you who have been in DSS for a very long time. So you have uh, Omni, OTIF there. You have uh, store markups and markdowns. Order forecast is huge. Store demand forecast is huge. Modular plan metrics, DC metrics, Omni sales, store sales, and inventory. And basically, there's just kind of these are just kind of the genres that they want you to pick from. Each of these data sets contains a ton of business elements that will uh, basically uh, uh, become just columns in your reports. So click into these, look at those business elements to try to get a sense of of what each of them is really reporting um, uh, on, but the, the titles themselves are pretty descriptive as well. So first of all, we're going to look at a store sales and inventory report, how to, how to start with that data set, how to build something out. And then a little bit of the kind of rough DSS equivalent there at the bottom uh, within sales margin, company summary report, or store detail report. Again, there's the, the store sales and inventory is kind of like all over DSS too. So uh, uh, that can be helpful for that too. So within the data set, they have they have preset reports already sort of built out, and then they have an option to build a report out within that data set from scratch. So again, things are getting a little bit uh, a little bit kind of more granular now. Uh, you can build any report from scratch, just pulling whatever business elements you want. Um, but most of the reporting that you're going to be doing is going to be within these da these data sets. Store sales and inventory is massive. It's huge. That's most of what you'll be doing, or I, I, not necessarily what you'll be doing, but that is what most Luminate basic users will be uh, using the most, if that makes sense. That's kind of its main purpose. But they've got some some of the reports listed out here, and I and I wanted to call some of them out too. So the uh, online pickup and delivery report, uh, you can look at returns, you can look at markup and markdown uh, reporting uh, in this data set as well. And just the essential in-store performance data set stuff too. So that's all that. Um, one thing that I will say too, is this is so high level. Uh, I would recommend whenever you're, whenever you're going through these, click on a data set, and then go right to build a report from scratch and look at the business elements there. I think I mentioned that already, but that is, uh, I think, a much better way of sort of orienting yourself in these new data sets, in these new reports, because uh, you'll get a sense of of what those of what those are. Just pick a time frame and then pull one of each of those from scratch, and 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 that could be really helpful for 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 getting a set, uh, getting a sense of what's going on, if if you have the time for something like that. Uh, so Omni sales will be going to next. Again, this is the big kind of push. So uh, I wanted to, uh, what is the DSS equivalent? Well, there isn't really a DSS equivalent is what Walmart has been saying. But of course, there's a lot of different things that people would use to compare Omni, to compare uh, .com with in-store with whatever, right? So um, Omni, it's not like Omni didn't exist on DSS. It did. It was just, it, uh, uh, Walmart alleges it wasn't as easy. It wasn't as kind of, um, it wasn't as much of a priority. So 
uh, uh, this is uh, part of that big push. You can um, build a report from scratch, but of course this is gonna be on the 13 week trends. Uh, you can look at items across channels. Obviously that's kind of the main thing that it's there for. And um, you can see year over year overall category sales in the first one, year over year item sales um, broken out by channel. Those are the kind of um, uh, uh, the highest level of reporting that they've automated in that for you. Um, and then of course you can look at, uh, you can build a report from scratch, do things on your own, um, get creative with it too. DC metrics, uh, yeah, so this is this is um, basically your inventory kind of version. Uh, so um, the 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 reports that they've built out for you within this data set are um, on uh, last week's average. So if you want to do more time frame stuff, if you want to do more like trend stuff, um, if you're not just using this for like basically fulfillment then you would maybe want to um, build one of these from scratch to get a little bit more of a kind of like a high view. Um, but if you're just using it for fulfillment, as a lot of people um, are, or sales, um, uh, demand planning, stuff like that, then, um, then, then these built out reports might be helpful enough anyways. There's so much in DSS that is kind of touching on this. So I, I was having a very hard time kind of narrowing it down. Um, but a lot of the fulfillment reports, um, a lot of the supply chain reports generally in DSS are uh, very helpful for this. And again, maybe here's a little bit of a key into what Walmart is kind of thinking with this transition, that um, the language that is being used, right? Maybe supply chain is too broad of a term now, its definition has changed. Maybe before supply chain was basically synonymous with fulfillment and it's just not that way anymore. So now we need to be talking about DC metrics. We need to be talking about actual on-hand stuff um, in a different way. Uh, okay, I wanna talk about store demand forecast. We have a section here at the end to talk about, um, to talk about the, the vendor scorecard, which is, you know, basically, it might be the only thing that some of you ever use in Luminate. So I don't want to spend too much time here, but uh, we're talking about demand. We're talking about forecasting. We're talking about uh, on hand uh, stuff at the metrics or uh, um, metrics at the DC level. Um, this is the same thing, but at the store level, right? So again, it's helpful. It might be helpful just to build a report from scratch at the beginning so you can expand that so you can see a little bit more of the high level stuff. Um, but of course, your scorecard will be helpful for all of that too. Um, but if you're looking at store demand uh, forecast, you're doing forecasting and um, the, the two reports that they have built out here for you are last week again, right? So um, by subcategory and then by vendor. So depending on what kind of level that um, of granularity you want to, to go to, or not so much level of granularity, but like genre of granularity, if that makes sense. Um, so reporting insights and, and charter, I, I touched on this a little bit. I just want to talk about it a little bit more. Um, the data is more customizable in charter. So you can, you, some of what the benefits of charter are, are applicable to these reports that you would be pulling in, in, in the report builder section. But then there are also these basically separate apps that um, come with charter too. So like the APIs, for example, that's a completely separate app. And what it will be doing is doing the backend pulling um, and 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 taking that data, putting it somewhere else so that you don't have to uh, go into Charter every time to pull it or, or whatever. Right. So the, some of it is some of it will change the way that you look at basic. Some of it will change the kinds of reports you can pull in basic. Some of it is just a completely separate thing, completely separate functionality from just building out reports uh, or giving you a different kind of data in those reports. All right, so we're gonna do the scorecard here really quickly. This is important. Uh, obviously it's just the most important um, uh, report basically that is out there um, or has the most kind of relevance uh, to line reviews and stuff like that. So I wanna cover that. Um, 
this is different from uh it's a different page so let me see yeah here and, and we'll come back to this later where we were before was in the data set so that's your basic kind of reports that you can pull um uh or it's it's a way of thinking about some of the reports that you can pull under the reports tab itself is where you'll pull the scorecard so that's what we'll be talking about it's also where your reports will live um and um you can name them and all that too but yeah this is the vendor scorecard the scorecard it's it's the big one right um but yeah so you're gonna start out there and you're gonna build a new report and start out in my reports build out a new report these will live here in the report section not in the data set section data sets are how you're how you one of the ways that you start out building a report uh the vendor scorecard will live under the reports themselves so you can look into that click into that there and you can run one on the far the far right side is where it's going to kind of pop out so you can customize the scorecard um, as much as you want there too um, you can just kind of run it automatically with the time frames that they have automatically set to it or you can again customize it as much as you as much as you would any other report mm -hmm. so uh these are some of the some of the really important uh filter levels that you have for this you can you can start out as broad as vendor and you can go down to the item level you can also do subcategories it's, it's not called out here but um subcategories uh fine line level all of that is available and I think customizable. I'm not sure how customizable it is in in uh sorry, in basic as opposed to charter, but the the main idea is just that you can filter down to a particular level of granularity. Um and if you need more granularity between item and category and it's not available to you on a fine line level or something like that, that may be something you want to ask walmart about in terms of is is charter can we do that in charter if that's the if that's the information that you're really looking for okay so um some of the more i guess i would say cosmetic elements of it you can um you can name them you can have an optional description uh, the names are essential and then you can uh, pick your format and you can also pick the cadence there too. So um, if that's something that you're just going to need at a pretty regular interval, which most of you probably will, you can schedule that all in there. So um, this is something that I think has changed a bit as, as Luminate has, has onboarded. At the beginning, uh, it seemed like there weren't any major differences between the scorecard and Luminate and the scorecard and DSS. But this is something that I just want to kind of include here at this point to hear back from you guys if you are seeing some of that. Is, are there differences or are there is it just kind of all of the same lines and stuff? So um it again, I, I don't want to I don't want to make the you know kind of paranoia set in or whatever, but is that uh is there something that you were getting in your scorecard through DSS that you're not getting through basic? That Walmart is going to kind of ask you to pay for in the form of charter, um, that will be really helpful for your business. I don't, I don't really think so. I think that what's going on there is that Walmart at this is doing kind of two things. They want to make it really easy for you to give accurate reporting to your buyer, right, for these line reviews because they don't want anything to get in the way of that. They want to sniff out any poor performances, right? Um, but at the same time, they want to be able to capitalize and make money off of some of their bigger customers who have a lack of visibility into what their the Walmart's customers, Walmart's shoppers are actually thinking about it. So that's how I that's how I kind of think about uh, what each of these things are doing. Um so I wouldn't I wouldn't imagine that there's too much of a difference there, but I always want to ask that um and just pull you guys, you know, have you seen any differences? Is there something that is that is missing or um something that wasn't as manual that has become more manual or is it Kind of nice. Um, that's really helpful uh, information to know too. So um, this is all going to be review. If you if you were pulling the scorecard in 
in DSS. Uh, hopefully this is all reviewed to you um, as well. But uh, important kind of time ranges to pay attention to, uh, fuzzy dates for the more manual reporting or the more kind of like high level reporting uh, you'll use fuzzy dates for or um, or year over year. Um, warehouse metrics you can you can look at ships at cost, cost on hand, et cetera. We've talked about to the big one really is sales and Jim Roy. Um, if you want to look at omni-channel performance, you can uh, or warehouse metrics, DC metrics, we already talked about the other kind of data sets that you can use for looking at that information. So it's not as valuable. Um, when I think of the scorecard, I think of Jim Roy, basically. I just think of like Walmart's Walmart's big, huge number that is your performance, right? That gives people so much anxiety. So um, that's, that's what I think of um, um, that kind of being. Um, but yeah, again, you... All that should be kind of reviewed for you. I don't think that we have a ton of questions left, so we might have a lot of time for our um, product preview if you're interested in that. Um, but Danielle, do you have any questions we didn't get um, to? I do not see any questions that have come through. I'll just give it a little bit more time. And uh, in the meantime, just call out some of our resources. If you are looking for more hands-on material, we have multiple free educational eBooks. A great one to go hand in hand with this webinar is that Luminate eBook um, that I sent in the chat earlier. Uh, this week, we also released a new cheat sheet on Walmart's departments, categories, and fine lines. Essentially, it is a resource that breaks down the item hierarchy at Walmart. So we'll see some information on accounting departments, item subcategories, and fine lines. Uh, there is also item analysis with supplier one and luminate in this resource. I will go ahead and send it in the chat so you can download it if it is something that you are interested in. But in the meantime, it looks like we didn't have any further questions that have come through. So if you think of a question later on or would like to share any insights, please feel free to reach out to us on email or you can find us at supplypike.com. We would love to continue that conversation with you. Uh, but that is all that we have for our content portion of today's webinar. Uh, we're going to switch it up and move on to our product preview, where you can go uh, see a little bit of our deduction solutions. Peter is going to show you some really cool features and give you a little insight into how we could potentially help you. So I will just go and hand it right back to you, Peter. Thanks, Daniel. That's a good shout out for our new ebook um, that we were that we were working on. There's a lot of stuff there on on fine lines and some of the customization stuff that we talked about um, in Luminate in that ebook as well. So it is a great resource to have, but it's also kind of relevant to the um, conversation uh, today. All right, so um, here we have a demo company, right? So this is demo data. Um, uh, for those of you who are not as familiar with Supply Pike, this is just a little bit of a very, very, very high level introduction to what it is that we do um, uh, and what our product really is for. So I like to start here showing a little bit of the high level, what, what the highest level of data is that we're really showing. Again, what we do is we cover revenue loss. So whatever you're losing to kind of supply chain performance stuff, shortages, all of that, we can report on all of it here in very kind of consumable, um, uh, uh, in a very kind of consumable display, um, which deduction codes in in Walmart? Or so these are this is a this is a Walmart setting. We have other uh, retailers that we're in as well too. But which particular deduction codes are we getting hit with the most in terms of dollar cost? In terms of count, um, what's the difference there? Right? Um, how are we different from others in that sense? Uh, we have a little bit of root cause stuff too, but I won't get too much into the weeds with that because it's more helpful to talk about, well, how are you getting all this data? Like, um, uh, where is this coming from? And, um, and, and how can we automate everything to make it all easier? So I want to go into a shortage here. So we got an individual claim, code 22. Um, I want to look at an individual uh, uh, claim to show you guys a little bit of how, how all of this works, if you're not already familiar. So one of the things that is really kind of the core, I would say, of Supply Pike and of the product itself is the shipping document integration. And we integrate with your retail link so that we can tell automatically which of these which of these deductions is valid 
which is invalid. We can give you a pretty good um, sense of that. So that's what this right here is underneath the, the claim itself. Uh, likely invalid. And then here's the root cause. The shipped quantity matches invoice quantity on deducted items. So basically what they're saying is we've looked at the PO, we've looked at the invoice, we looked at the uh, inventory received report PDF, and we've looked at the BOL and it's all there. There's It's all congruent with each other. And we can say, yep, this is not legit. And you can submit the dispute right away, um, or you can dispute it automatically. So that's uh, something that we like to talk about too. Um, what this is all doing is, yeah, of course it's saving you money, um, but it's also saving you money in the in the form of saving you time. So you can auto dispute these charges individually um, and you can pick your criteria. Uh, I want to do the, uh, I wanna do all criteria, likely invalid, invalid, or validity unclear. I wanna dispute every single code 22. Um, every single shortage. So I can set that up. Uh, I can set a deduction amount limit, and then I can save those changes, and then it will kind of automatically dispute those. Um, or I could do, instead of just those, I just want the ones that we're completely sure are invalid. Um, those are the only ones that I want to actually dispute. Um, for whatever reason, we could do that too. Um, so you can save that, you can set it up, and um, but yeah, that's kind of the main feature. That's the main focus. Um, I don't think that there's any more questions on the app itself, um, but I will put our emails back on screen here for just a second. Um, if you have any more questions about that, please uh, feel free to reach out. Thank you all for joining us today. Have a great rest of your day.